All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, you do not want to miss today's segment. So please, please, please go ahead and tag your friends into um, this, this live today. You do not want to miss it as we speak with Kyle from Hands On Orlando about Corporate Social Responsibilities Program. Um, Kyle, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it is my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. So before we get started, if you are joining, once again, please invite your friends to the Facebook group. Um, remember, they have to be a part of the group to tune into this live and then go ahead and tag them into the comments. If you're catching us on replay, give us a hashtag replay in the comments as well. Hey, Shelby, good morning. Um, while we wait for others to join, go ahead and give us a hi, good morning in the um, chat box so that we know that you're here. You do not want to miss, miss today's segment as we talk about corporate social responsibility programs. Kyle, I'm so grateful for you to come on and share um, the program and share information about Hands On Orlando with our group today. So I appreciate you coming on. Oh, I'm excited to talk about it. And uh, we're going to get deep into the CSR business. So I'm going to look forward to those questions and comments and you know, also share your experiences too. If you've had work, if you've done work with the CSR, you know, in the past or you want to get done in the future. Yes, absolutely. All right, so we're going to give it a few minutes. I see that we're tagging in the chat box. Awesome, we're going to give it a few minutes before we get started. And then once again, if you're catching it on replay, give us a hashtag replay. We would love to um, know that you were able to tune in. Um, invite your friends into the group so that they don't miss out on this conversation. Um, and then we're going to get started shortly this month. Um, so you all know last weekend we had our, on Saturday, we had our grand opening and it was absolutely fabulous. We'll be sharing some of those pictures with you all um, in the group. I know we were able to do a private tour last week. If you haven't seen it, please go ahead and check that out. Um, so please check that out. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, Kyle, thank you so much for joining us. And um, I'm so excited that we're going to kind of emphasize and talk about corporate social responsibility and learn more. And I know you have uh, expertise in this area, so we can't wait to listen in and hear um, more information about that. But before we get started, if you don't mind just telling us about yourself, about um, Hands on Orlando, and kind of why you entered the um, nonprofit arena. Sure. Well, Good morning, everyone. My name is Kyle Traeger. I'm the executive director of Hands on Orlando. I started with the organization back in 2013 as a coordinator, and I've moved up the ranks, and uh, here I am. So, you know, it's um, it's not nor I think it's a little unusual for to stay with an organization for this long. But the, one of the reasons I did is because of the dynamic work that we are doing in the community, and we started back in 1999. And we operate in all uh, all of. Listen to me, Orange, <laughs> Osceola. I'm in Benning counties, Orange, <laughs> Osceola, and Seminole counties. And we have, um, you know, we've we've had kind of two different versions of Hands on Orlando from 1999 up to 2020. Uh, we did a lot of volunteer management, so we would organize uh, folks to join our projects. We post the opportunities online. People would sign up. We would go to places like Second Harvest Food Bank, United you know, Against Poverty, Mustard Seed, and others, and we would lead volunteer experiences. And then something happened in 2020 called COVID, and it completely devastated our way of doing business. And so we had to reinvent ourselves. And the Hands on Orlando of today retain, retains very few uh, of the original parts of it that was founded in 1990, with one main exception. exception. We never stop doing corporate social responsibility work. That has been our bread and butter. That is where we probably have the most expertise and knowledge um, in our community. I'm a little biased, at least um, from my experience, we work with lots of different organizations of various sizes. We put on those lar large conferences, trade shows, corporate meetings, and we do a lot of those, what I like to call move those, you know, move that bus uh, moment. So, I'll get into that here in a second, but I want to just talk about, you know, our mission and, you know, why we do what we do. So our mission is to help people and nonprofits and businesses save time, money, and maximize their impacts through hands-on volunteer action to save, uh, to change lives across Central Florida. And so what that means in practice is we like to be a force multiplier, right? We don't like to do replication. We don't like to be redundant. 
What we'd like to do is find those critical areas where we can make an impact and really multiply the effects that either we are doing or other organizations are doing. And that takes the, you know, that takes a couple of different forms. The first being our volunteer calendar. This is where we highlight a lot of our partner organizations' volunteer opportunities. So we list them on our calendar, we promote them on our social media, and we really encourage people to get involved. And if people have questions about, you know, who they want to volunteer with, or if they have a specific group that they're, you know, they want to bring out, we work with them, we identify the different places that we have opportunities for, and we encourage them again to sign up. So we, we really try to advertise a lot of our partners, what they're doing in the community, highlight their good work and get people to volunteer with them. The second thing that we do, uh, which is a relatively new thing we started probably in the last year, is a court ordered referral network. So we've identified that there's a real lack of opportunity for folks who have those court ordered community service hours to do. And so I've partnered with UCF for the past year in identifying organizations that have those programs. And then we listed them all on our website in one place and connected them uh, through you know, links to the organization's website so that if a person comes looking for those hours, we now list a number of organizations in town that have opportunities. You click on the name, takes you directly to the website in the section you need to be in to start getting involved. So we find that's really helpful in saving people time you know, and stress in trying to identify those opportunities. The other thing that we do is something called the Central Florida Service Alliance. And this is a program where local businesses join. It's a membership-based organization and we plan and manage service projects for them. So it really helps to activate employee volunteer programs. It helps to get folks out of the office or out of their home office and into the community, learning about the different issues, volunteering alongside each other so that they can understand a little bit more of why we're facing some of the issues we face here in Central Florida and how they can be part of the solution. But of course, the reason why we're all here today is our marquee program, which is our corporate social responsibility and team building. And like I said earlier, this we started this back in 1999 and we have been going ever since. And so, you know, there's a few things that we do. Uh, mostly, uh, they fall into two categories. The first being in hotel or in conference work. And this is where we bring service projects to the, to the conference or to the corporate meeting. And this can range in a, you know, from, from putting together food kits or hygiene kits to making piggy banks or putting together emergency fund kits, right? And these, these of course, would be items that you would find um, you know, if you were in a hurricane shelter, you know, having something ready to go that you can have with games and puzzles and other things to kind of make the time pass a little quicker, right? And we do that in a team building fashion. So we'll put together games and challenges and work with the corporation to figure out what is the best way to approach having folks interact with each other, having them learn about each other and getting important work done for the community, but also building a sense of camaraderie, of building that sense of that corporate culture of service. So that's been really popular in the past couple of years, especially with COVID because mm -hmm. places, people don't wanna travel as far, they don't wanna to go to places they don't know. And they figure if they're all ready with these people, you know, they're gonna, one way or the other, you know, they're gonna, these are the folks that they're with and it's their little bubble. So they like to do a lot of that work there. The other part is going out into the community. And so this is starting to get pick up steam again now that COVID is hopefully not going to uh, you know, not being as much of an issue going forward. And this is where we plan those traditional service projects where you see us doing like the big landscaping projects, the painting, you know, doing some light maintenance, some, some, some renovation, bringing out hundreds of volunteers. That's why I call it move that bus moment, right? Where mm -hmm. we can take a place that you know, is it need a little TLC and in about three hours, transform it and really make it an amazing experience for all the volunteers who are coming out from the corporate sector, again, who may work in tech or big pharma or, you know, whatever it is, now they're all becoming painters and landscapers and they're becoming interior designers, right? And mm -hmm. they're learning on how they can give back in a, in, a, in a real tangible way to these organizations that are doing really good work and it's a lot of fun, you know, because it gets them out of the conference room, it gets them out of the hotel, into the community, talking with the folks who work at these organizations, talking with the folks who, who serve the organizations, you know, who are served by the organizations. So they're getting a really good understanding of what does Central Florida really look like? Because you got to remember when these people come here, they're staying in the tourist district, they're staying in these beautiful hotels. They don't understand that within, you know, a few miles where they are, 
there's a real need to help our community. And so they're able to do that. And the most important part, and let's not forget this, is that they bring to the table a budget. And mm -hmm. a lot of times that budget is really critical for the work that we're doing. So one of the things I really like to highlight to nonprofit leaders is some, you know, don't be afraid to say yes. Because sometimes I think, I've encountered it myself personally. Mm -hmm. We're talking about hundreds of volunteers coming to your facility and doing these big transformational projects. It's a little intimidating. You think about, okay, what are my costs, right? What are my, you know, what staff commitments do I have to make? And the one caveat I would say is make sure you're not paying for it, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I think far too often nonprofit leaders want to be accommodating and they want to be good partners. However, you got to understand who you're dealing with. If you're dealing with a multi-billion dollar corporation, they can afford to buy paint. They can <laughs> afford to provide the tools and the resources necessary to make this a successful project. One of the reasons why we have been so successful in this space is because we bring a lot of that expertise, right? So when you work with Hans Orlando, a lot of times, the only thing we ask you to do is open the facility, provide some staff to walk around and talk with the volunteers and we'll take care of the rest. We operate a very large tool bank with all the things you would ever need for a project like this. We work with the company to plan all aspects of the operation. We bring our own staff, our own volunteers in to help manage everything so that the burden on the nonprofit is as little as, you know, as small as possible. Mm -hmm. What we want is we want the nonprofit leaders and their staff to walk around and talk to the CEO, talk to the, you know, executives that are there. Tell them about your mission, because when you think of it like this, right, it's not a burden, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to improve your facility, it's an opportunity to get your, your message and your mission out, but you also can cultivate future donors, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of these companies, they come to Orlando and they usually have some presence in Orlando. So, you know, you can talk to the local office. Hey, you came out for the big service project. Are you interested in volunteering? Are you interested in contributing? Are you interested in becoming a board member, right? And you can maintain those relationships because you had that initial like, you know, experience where everyone's out there working together, learning about what you're doing. So that is something I think that a lot of organizations say no, and mm -hmm. they lose an opportunity because they think it's gonna to be too much work. And don't because find a way to say yes, you know, but also remember what I said earlier, don't pay for everything. You know, we want this mm -hmm. to happen to you as little with as little or no cost as possible. And another thing too, that I think is important is that, you know, you don't bend over backwards and try to change your mission to accommodate a group. Mm -hmm. So I think we're all aware, you know, sometimes you get a donor, I'll give you a hundred thousand dollars if you start doing work in this area. But it's like, that's not what we do, you know, and we're all yep. kind of, same thing with this, right? If, if an organization wants to come in and they are intent on building a basketball facility mm -hmm. and you have nothing to do with basketball whatsoever, you know, you might want to say, hey, we really appreciate what you're offering, but is there a way that we can turn this basketball court into something that is actually, you know, what we would think more useful for the mission that we have, right? So make sure you advocate for yourself. You don't have to, you know, um, be overly accommodating. You can still stand your ground. You can still, you know, advocate for your mission and the work that you're doing, right? And I think a lot of times there's a fundamental language barrier between the for-profit and nonprofit sectors. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes that the for-profit comes in with certain expectations and then the nonprofit has certain expectations. And I think sometimes they miss the mark with each other. And again, one of the reasons why we've been successful is that we speak both. We speak mm -hmm. for-profit language and we speak the nonprofit language. So we can understand that on the for-profit side, they're looking to accomplish certain goals and tasks, right? They want team building. They want that corporate social responsibility, right? They want to make sure that their videographer and their team can come through and document everything they're doing. And then we know with the nonprofit, we understand that there's important work to be done. So I, we identify what are your priorities? What do you want to see done with this opportunity? And then we work with them to make sure that their goals are, are met, the, the for-profit's goals are met, and everyone can leave feeling like we got some real good work accomplished today. So those are, those are some of the big, you know, I'd say big picture things with CSR from the nonprofit side. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and I think this is a good transition point to kind of move into like, how do you know you're doing a good job, right? 
Mm -hmm. And that's where the measurement and evaluation comes in. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we like to do with our, with our corporations, you know, our partners is we like to understand what is your baseline? Like, what are your expectations? What are you looking to accomplish? And if they may not know themselves, and we usually use our expertise and knowledge to guide them. Okay. Are you looking for team building? Are you looking for service? Are you looking for, you know, a host of other things? All right, great. Then we're going to start, you know, setting the project up in that way so that when we execute the project at the end, and if we do a survey, right, or we do some other means of data gathering, we can understand, did we hit the mark? You know, did people feel like this was a team building opportunity? Did people feel like their time was, was used properly? Did people feel like they had an adequate amount of work? Did they have enough resources, right? And then we can take that data and go, okay, great. So when we have a 500 person project, the amount of water, the amount of tools, the amount of supplies that we allocated, the type of work that we created, this was good. This satisfied everyone's need. We had you know, an overwhelmingly good response. Fantastic. On the flip side, if you don't, it's a good learning lesson, right? Mm -hmm. We have 500 people and it's in June. We might need to make sure we have more water for people. We want to make sure that we don't forget the sunscreen, right? We want to make sure that we have all, you know, enough tools and supplies so that people aren't standing around and that they're feeling like their time was properly used. So, you know, I think with, with data measurement, it's important, you know, obviously to know what you're measuring and not just to measure for measure's sake, because mm -hmm. you want to make sure that data is useful. But at the same time, you need to kind of take it in context. And you have to understand that some groups are going to think this is the best thing you've ever done. They just love everything about you and you're fantastic. And some groups are going to be like, we didn't like any of this. It was raining. It was 9,000 degrees in the middle of July. This is not like what we, you know, we don't like doing this, right? This is not our cup of tea. Our leadership made us do this, you know? And then take that again with a grain of salt too, because you want to make sure that the data that you're getting, you know, you don't underreact. You don't overreact, you know, you find out what is that baseline you're trying, you're trying to maintain and you adjust accordingly. Otherwise you might be chasing your tail, right? You're never going to be able to implement a real policy or a real strategy because you're constantly changing it. So I like I like to look at things through, you know, the type of project that we're doing. Is it in hotel? Is it out of the hotel? How many people? Because it all is, it's all is like a stratification, right? And then from there, I, I assign different measurements collect different data, and then hopefully we'll be able to get some good information, which will guide ourselves going forward into the future. Awesome. So I have a question for you. So let's say for, because we have um, organizations that's tuning in throughout the U.S. and 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 I know all of them do not have a hands-on Orlando in their area, um, which would be awesome and great. What recommendations do you have for these organizations that may not have another organization that comes in and make it um, as as easy of a process as you all do? Um, what recommendations would you have for them to build, you know, their own corporate social responsibility program in-house? Okay, so. Number one, prioritize what you want to get done. Make sure you are driving the conversation. So talk with your staff, talk with your volunteers, talk with your stakeholders, right? And identify you know, your top 10. Do you want to get the floors redone? Do you want to get painting done? Do you want your landscaping done, right? What are the things that are important to you? And then from there, I would talk with, community partners, right, who may have had a CSR experience, who may have had, you know, um, Coca-Cola or Nike or some big company come through over the years and work with them. Find out what went well, find out what didn't go so well, right? Whatever knowledge that you can gain from that, apply it to yourselves. Because one of the things you don't want to do is going to something and not fully understand what you're getting your, yourself into, right? The company comes and says, we're gonna be, uh, we wanna come and we wanna completely, you know, renovate all your bathrooms, right? First of all, understand that that's usually a huge, a huge, huge, huge project that require permits and everything else like that, right? Mm -hmm. And then go, hey, we really appreciate your enthusiasm, but what we really need to get done is, you know, top 10 list, redirect it. Mm -hmm. If they go, we're not interested. That's probably the best outcome that you could have hoped for. 
because you don't want someone coming in, like I said earlier, and dictating to you what's going to be done at your facility. So you want to make sure that you have a good partner who understands your needs, right? And that you're driving the conversation. Um, the second thing, obviously asking about other experiences. And the third thing I would do is if you are um, part of a national organization or you're part of a national association, right? Or some sort of larger entity than just yourself, reach out to them, find out what CSR contacts they have, what organizations have received help through their network. And again, reach out to them to find out their experience, but also reach out and find and what companies are doing this work. Give them a call, send them an email, be proactive. I can tell you for a fact, a lot of times companies start this by Googling things. You know, they don't exactly know what they're looking for either. And they're trying to find an organization to reach out to, to contact, you know, have a conversation. Again, the nice thing about Hands on Orlando is that we do all that work. I am happy to say though, we do have affiliates all around the United States. Mm -hmm. And most of us do corporate social responsibility work. So if you are in, you know, if you, if you wanna Google, you know, the points of light affiliates, that's gonna come up. You know, if you have one in your town, reach out to them for sure. Let them know that you're interested. Let them know your top 10 list, you know, and tell them that you are very happy to work with them. And a lot of times you'll be able to get some, you know, some cooperation and some really good partnerships with them as well. Um, the last thing, the last thing I would say is prepare your staff to work with folks in CSR. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, just like how you have to prepare your staff to work with volunteers, right. And make sure that we're all on the same page and understand that sometimes, you know, volunteers may, may do things in such a way that may make the staff feel a certain way, but you have to sort of bridge those gaps because we're all in it for the same, for good reasons. And we all want the same things, right. Same thing with CSR. You have to be ready and let your staff know, hey, we're going to have people coming in here. They're going to be doing some work because the folks who are coming in are not from the nonprofit world, right? They're not, mm -hmm. they may volunteer, but you know, nothing like what we're doing. And you have to kind of, you know, really make it a welcoming space and be um, patient and understanding that maybe they don't know everything about everything and really help them and, and be open because like I said, you never know the person you're working with that day is going to turn around and give you a $5,000 contribution tomorrow. So you really have to understand these people are coming in. They want to serve. They may have, they may have access to resources that we're not used to, right? And really mm -hmm. make it a positive experience so that when they go home, they think, oh, man, that, that was great. I really had a great time doing this work at this organization. I'm going to follow them on Facebook. I'm going to you know, keep track. I might give them, you know, yearly donations, or if they live in town, they could become a donor, a, you know, or a board member, a volunteer. So you just never know, always be open and always be willing to put your best foot forward and showcase, you know, the absolute amazingness of your organizations. That's awesome. So I have one more question um, for you and let me just um, go, I'm going to go to the chat box really quick and then I'm going to ask you the uh, question. Say, hey, Dolly. Hey, Michelle. Thank you for joining. And if you all have any questions, please drop them um, in the chat box. Hi, hi, Micah. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay. So the question I have for you is um, what tools do you believe a nonprofit organization needs to have in order to prepare, let's say if they're not right now, going to reach out to corporations, but let's say it does happen where a corporation will Google, they'll be in town, um, they'll reach out and say, hey, we're going to be in your area, we want to do something. Can you give me, like, what are some tools that you think that nonprofits should have in their toolkit to prepare for that or anything else that may come along, um, you know, when, when a request comes through from a corporation? I would, I would say, let's go back to our top 10 list. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to things that we've identified, right? And I would say instead of having, you know, because you what you really want, the ideal thing would be to tell a company, hey, for instance, we need painting done, right? We need mm -hmm. all we need all new painting, interior, exterior. What you'd like, to, what I think would be really smart would be to go ahead and figure out what does that look like? How many, you know, rollers do I need? How many um, gallons of paint do I need? How many rolls of blue tape, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Figure that out so that when the company is like, hey, we would love to do a painting project with you. You know, we have a budget. We would love to use this budget to help you. How can we do that? And then you go, oh, 
here you go. Mm -hmm. Here's a list of everything that we've already pre-identified. And if you will just go and talk to the Home Depot or Lowe's and go and buy that, we'll be excited and ready to work with you on that. So I really, like I said earlier, I don't, I'm not a big fan of, of, of the nonprofits putting a lot of money into this work, um, you know, because I really do, I really do believe that, you know, CSR is about the private sector helping the nonprofit sector. And okay. so, you know, if you are going to, if you have, you know, a landscaping project, right? I would imagine if you have, if you have grounds on your campus, I imagine you probably have either a lawn care team that's taking care of it, or if it is volunteer based, you're going to have, you know, a um, small amount of tools already to do that work. What I would say is imagine then scale up. If you had a hundred people out there doing the things that you want to get done, if you've had long-term projects to put in flower beds or to, you know, revamp uh, an area with, with new uh, removing bases of plant natives, right? What does that look like? Again, what is that scale? And at the same time, what am I going to do with all this stuff after the project? Am I going to keep it? Or am I going to leverage this right to help other organizations? So if you're a nonprofit that have those campuses, you get a big landscaping project, they buy a bunch of extra tools to scale. At that point, one of the things I like to think about is how do I leverage this opportunity to contact other organizations in your area that do gardening, that do community gardens, you know, or environmental cleanup and say, hey, we got all this stuff, please take it off our hands and use it for your mission as well. You know, there's no need to be storing a hundred shovels if you don't need them, you know? So that is, that's, that's another area too. Um, one thing I will say though, is if you are, um, going to try to keep tools and your own resources buy the durables. And what I mean by that is like for paint rollers, okay. buy the frame, don't buy the actual roller, you know, okay. which is the because the durables will last, obviously. They're called dur durables, right? Mm -hmm. So that's something that you can keep for years and have the other, you know, have the CSR component buy mm -hmm. all of the expendable items. I think that, you know, if you're going to maintain mm -hmm. tools of any sort, that's the formula I would follow. Awesome. Okay. So um, tell me, how, how can we stay in touch with you all at Hands On Orlando? Well, we can, we uh, do uh, post on our Facebook and our Instagram. So okay. we have a lot of uh, interesting stuff there. Our website is constantly updated with new information um, and new opportunities. So, you know, anytime like that, or you can just give me a call if you ever just want to talk CSR. I'm more than happy to do, especially with organizations that are getting into this space and have some questions. Um, you know, I'm, I'm always encouraging for nonprofits to advocate for themselves leverage the relationships they have with the corporate community and get some important work done at little or no cost to themselves. Love it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much once again, Kyle, for joining us today and sharing your expertise in the area of corporate social responsibility program. Um, we appreciate you coming on today. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, everyone. So last but not least, before we wrap up today's show, don't forget if you have not registered for our upcoming free webinar on April 26th at 7 p.m. on um, our focus is going to be taking your nonprofit to the next level using people, processes, and technology. You don't want to miss out as we talk about that uh, framework. So please, that will be your homework today. Go ahead and register for that. Um, other than that, as you all remember, this month's theme is measurement and evaluation. Kyle touched on what that can look like within the um, CSR, CSR programs. Um, and so think about that. Continue to think about how you can include uh, measurement and evaluation in what you do um, within your organization. And definitely check out our guides where we shared throughout the month some other resources for you all in that area. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. Kyle, thank you once again for joining us. We appreciate you. And, and um, hopefully this is not the last time we'll schedule some additional times for you to come on and talk to us throughout the year. Um, but thank you all um, so much for joining us. All right, everyone. Bye. <laughs>